And I just wanted to record a really quick video to show you how to set up a JavaScript node server. Um, so Node is a really great platform that you can use to run JavaScript on the server side as opposed to the client side. So JavaScript is a language of the browser. Um, it's, it's mostly used on the client side in a lot of other programming languages. But um, in order to run JavaScript on the back end, you have to use things like Node to make it work. Um, so I just wanted to show you how to set up a really simple node server so that you can render some HTML and return a JSON object. Um, and part of the way that we do that is by using um, another uh, JavaScript platform called Express. Uh, so Express is a web server um, and it allows the, the client side and the browser to communicate with the node server on the back end and to send HTTP requests across to the node server. Um, so before you set up your server, there are a couple of things that you need to install. Um, you need to install Node, first of all, if you haven't already installed it. So um, if uh, you go to the Node.js website, you can directly download it from there. Or also, if you're on a Mac, then you can use something like Homebrew to install Node as well. Um, you also... Um, need to npm install a few things as well. So you need to npm install body parser and also express itself so that you can use it with your node server. Um, okay, so the first thing that I did was just set up a really simple HTML file, it's just index.html, it's just a hello world file. Um, and this is what I want my server to render when I hit my root route. Okay, so uh, I also have a server.js file there are a couple of modules that you need to require in order to make your server work. Uh, so you need to require HTTP so that you can pass your HTTP requests across to your server um, and also re require Express, the web server. And then you also need to instantiate Express to make a new uh, Express server. So here I've called it app, um, just stored in a variable called app. And then the way that you um, basically configure your node server to take routes is through express so app.get so you're calling on express and you're saying if you send it a get request uh, to this root route so slash then it will call this function um, and then a similar response for the json um, route that i'm using as well so uh, when i want to render my index.html i'm just saying okay so if I'm trying to send a get request to this slash on my local host, to the slash, the, the, the root route, um, then I want to call this function and all that does is um, it takes in the HTTP request and in response it says, okay, send this file in exa.html um, and the underscore der name is just to say that it's in the directory um, where the server is as well because everything is in the, the same directory over here. Um, and then when I want to send my get request for my JSON, um, I've just made my own little JSON object over here. So I have an array, um, a JavaScript object, and then I've just made a JSON variable. So you can see here, and it just consists of keys, um, and then the values are the array and the object, just to give it a little bit of depth. So it's not just a kind of flat uh, JSON dictionary that I'm returning. So then instead of saying uh, res.send file back to render some HTML, like I did with the first route, I'm saying res.json, and I'm passing in this JSON object here um, to the res.json response body so that it will send back the JSON object as the response rather than the HTML file. Um, and then finally, I'm just saying app.listen6789. So all that means is it's just telling my node server to listen out on port 6789. Um, and then that means when you go to localhost 6789, it should show my page. So all I need to do now is start my server. So uh, normally you can just say node server.js. That's all you need to type into terminal. Um, so just uh, node server.js like that. And then if you hit enter, it'll start up your server. It won't say anything, um, but the server will be running if you go to your local host page. I prefer using um, 
an npm module called nodemon instead um it just basically continuously monitors your node server so then if you make any changes to the file at all it'll reload itself the problem with using just node server.js means every time your server crashes you have to manually restart the server and it's a pain sometimes uh, so if you use nodemon it means it just restarts itself so you don't have to keep watching it all the time so uh if you globally install Nodemon using npm, you can say um, npm install dash g Nodemon. Um, it'll tell it tells you how to do it on the Nodemon website as well, um, and then you can just use it the same way Nodemon server.js and it spins up your server for you. So now if I go back to my browser and I type in localhost six seven eight nine, if I go to my slash json route first, you can see um, the json object here that I, I wrote in my code, in my server.js file. And if you go to just um, localhost 6789 or put a slash on the end, you don't have to have the, the forward slash just for the root route. Then you can see the hello world that I wrote in the index.html file. Um, one last thing I wanted to point out was just uh, when I go to my JSON route, you can see um, my JSON is all nicely kind of laid out for me here. I can see the raw version of the object or I can see the parsed version. That's just because I'm using a Google Chrome plugin uh, here just called JSON Formatter. It's really great. It means that you can see your JSON a lot more easily than when it's just in the raw format. So uh, yeah, that's how you set up a really simple um, node server that can serve both HTML and is a partial API server. So um, I hope that helps. Thanks for listening.